Jeremiah chapter 24. This is the 11th study in the book of Jeremiah. And Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Jeremiah 24, beginning in verse 1. The Lord showed me, and there were two baskets of figs set before the temple of the Lord, after Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the craftsmen and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had very good figs, like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very bad figs, which could not be eaten, they were so bad. Then the Lord said to me, What do you see, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the bad, very bad, which cannot be eaten, they are so bad. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge those who are carried away captive from Judah, whom I have sent out of this place for their own good into the land of the Chaldeans. For I will set my eyes on them for good, and I will bring them back to this land. I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. The exiles whom God will send away into Babylon, God says are like good figs. God says he's going to watch over them and see that they are treated well. Even though they are being sent away and punished because of their sin. And so we see from this that God is a God who loves to bless. So even in his wrath, he looks for good ways. or He looks for ways to do good to people that he is disciplining. And then it says in verse 7, Then I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. And so, because of God's discipline, his sinning people will return to him. God's purpose for punishing his children is not just to make them feel pain, it's to restore them, to wake them up. Verse 8, And as the bad figs which cannot be eaten... They are so bad. Surely, thus says the Lord, so will I give up Zedekiah, the king of Judah, his princes, the residue of Jerusalem, who remain in this land, and those who dwell in the land of Egypt. I will deliver them to trouble into all the kingdoms of the earth for their harm, to be a reproach and a byword, a taunt and a curse in all places where I shall drive them. And I will send the sword the famine and the pestilence among them, till they are consumed from the land that I gave to them and their fathers. And so as for those who will not learn the lesson of God's discipline, they're going to suffer more and more. It's because they have a heart of stone, they're going to die in their sin. They will not repent, therefore they will suffer. Chapter 25. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, which was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, which Jeremiah the prophet spoke to all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying. And so we see from this that Jeremiah was very faithful to God. He always said what he was supposed to say to whoever God wanted him to say it. And it got him into a lot of trouble. But he did it anyway. 3. From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even to this day, this is the twenty-third year in which the word of the Lord has come to you, or come to me. And I have spoken to you, rising early and speaking, but you have not listened. And so Jeremiah preached the word of God for twenty-three years. For twenty-three years he preached the word of God, and no one listened to him. Godly people... Do not quit doing the right thing just because they do not inherit the good life in this world as a result of doing the good thing. That doesn't make them stop. They just keep doing it. That's what Jeremiah did. 
4. And the Lord has sent to you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, but you have not listened nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Repent now every one of his evil way and his evil doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord has given to you and your fathers forever and ever. Do not go after other gods to serve them and worship them, and do not provoke me to anger with the works of your hands, and I will not harm you. And so the word of God is never unreasonable, and he wasn't being unreasonable to his Old Testament people at all. It's not unreasonable. God told his people, be good, and I will make sure that things go well for you. But you know, God warned at the same time, if you continue to anger me, well, then you're going to pay. And that's exactly what happened. And it says in verse 7, Yet you have not listened to me, says the Lord, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. And God is saying, you just keep sinning. You do not listen. And so you have no one to blame for what you're going to suffer. You have no one to blame except yourself. Verse 8, Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, Because you have not heard my words, Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land, against its inhabitants, and against these nations all around, and will utterly destroy them, and make them an astonishment, a hissing, and a perpetual desolations. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones and the light of the lamp. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these na nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. God says, I have determined your punishment. I'm going to send Babylon to destroy you. For your great sin, your life is going to be a nightmare. When God punishes those who will not repent, as he says here, there will be no joy, there will be no laughter, no happiness. All good is replaced with evil for those who persist in evil. Verse 12, Then it will come to pass, when seventy years are completed, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation and the land of the Chaldeans for their iniquity, says the Lord, and I will make it a perpetual desolation. So I will bring on that land all my words which I have spoken against it, all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah has prophesied concerning all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall be served by them also, and I will repay them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. In other words, Babylon was also wicked. They were a wicked nation. So just because they will be God's instrument to punish his people, that doesn't mean they're going to get away with their own sin. They will not. They will be punished also. And it just goes to show that we cannot pay for our sins by letting God use us. Our sins must be forgiven through Jesus Christ by God's grace. Verse 15. For thus says the Lord God of Israel to me, Take this wine cup of fury from my hand, and cause all the nations to whom I send you to drink it, and they will drink and stagger and go mad because of the sword that I will send among them. The wine of God's wrath packs a powerful punch for those who he makes drink it. God's punishment drives sinners to the point of insanity. But they were, they're still going to feel every bit of pain that they've got coming. They will stagger, as God says. Stagger with astonishment and pain and suffering, and they'll feel every bit of it. 17. Then I took the cup from the Lord's hand and made all the nations drink to whom the Lord had sent me. And he goes on for the next, I don't know, about seven verses, naming all the nations. But the point is, Jeremiah took the cup from the Lord's hand and made all the nations drink of the cup of the fury of God's wrath, all the nations to whom the Lord had sent him. And this is the point. It wasn't just Israel who suffered for their sin. It wasn't just God's people who suffered for their sin. This world and all the nations in it belong to God. 
and therefore they are obliged to obey him whether they realize it or not. They are obliged to obey God and they're going to be punished if they do not. And God is fair. He will judge each person according to the light that they have, but everybody has some light that they could live up to. Verse 27, Therefore you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink, be drunk, and vomit. Fall and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. This is just figurative speech. God, though, is making it clear that he is ordering sinners to suffer the consequence of their sin. It's a command from God, which means they're not going to get away from it. And it's also, it's, it also makes clear that punishment is not just the natural consequence of sin. There are natural consequences of sin, but punishment is more than that. Punishment for sin is directed by the hand of God. He orders it, and it comes to pass. 28, and it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup from your hand to drink, then you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, You shall certainly drink. And so some sinners may not want to accept God's punishment. Well, too bad, they will accept it. It will be forced on them. They have no choice in the matter. 29. For behold, I begin to bring calamity on the city which is called by my name. And should you be utterly unpunished, you shall not be unpunished. For I will call for a sword on all the inhabitants of the earth, says the Lord of hosts. If God is just and will therefore punish the land that he loves, then the rest of the world is living in the land of make-believe if they think they're going to get away with their sin. It's not going to happen. If God punishes his family, then those who are not in his family will not get away unpunished. Verse 30. Therefore prophesy against them all these words and say to them, The Lord will roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He will roar mightily against his fold. He will give a shout as those who tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise will come to the ends of the earth for the Lord has a controversy with the nations. He will plead his case with all flesh he will give those who are wicked to the sword, says the Lord. God will put the human race on trial come judgment day. And for the wicked who will not repent, their verdict will be pain and suffering without end. 32. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, disaster shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the farthest parts of the earth. In other words, brace yourself, God says. Brace yourself, even though it's not going to do you any good. The worst is yet to come. And the thing is, there will be no place to hide, because calamity is going to be everywhere on the earth. 33. And at that day the slain of the Lord shall be from one end of the earth, even to the other end of the earth. And it says, They shall not be lamented, or gathered, or buried. They shall become refuse on the ground. Saving the planet from pollution will be the last thing on people's minds come Judgment Day. The entire earth will be polluted with the dead bodies of sinners. Verse 34. Wail, shepherds, and cry. Roll about in the ashes, you leaders of the flock, for the days of your slaughter and your dispersions are fulfilled. You shall fall like, precious, like a precious vessel, and the shepherds will have no way to flee nor the leaders of the flock to escape. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and a wailing of the leaders to the flock will be heard. For the Lord has plundered their pasture and the peaceful habitations are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. He has left his lair like the lion for their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor and because of his fierce anger. And so the leaders who preached comfortable little sermonettes to comfortable sinners will be made very uncomfortable by God. The time of God's patience will come to a screeching halt and they will feel His wrath. And we'll pick it up in chapter 26 next time. Until then, so long everyone.